Welcome to the basic module of Advanced and Wireless Communications. This course is part of the Colibri project and I'm now talking about mobile networks from first to first generation and this is the first part of this section. My name is Andreas Temgil, I'm with Hamburg University of Technology. If we talk about cellular communications and cellular networks, um, there were some first mobile communication systems available already since the 30s and 40s, mainly in the 40s uh, for mobile phones in the US. In the 50s they came to Europe and then we had something like an example in the A and B networks in Germany, we had something like 11,000 subscribers in Germany in 1971. And that was what it was at that time, something like a very rare luxury good. And this didn't change much over the next years. There was a patent in 1972 which changed the idea on how to do mobile uh, communications for telephones. And the idea was a cellular, to do a cellular. The idea was to use small base stations to uh, frequency reuse and to do some handover between the different cells. This was patented and the Bell Labs got that patent in 1972. The idea of the cellular we see on this picture here on the right, uh, we have different frequencies and we reuse the frequency in the fre after some distance. So um, we have uh, one frequency, we have other frequencies around this frequency in cells and we reuse this after something like one or two or three. And this uh, one or two or three we call the frequency reuse distance. What does this mean? What does this lead to? It leads to, firstly, we have smaller base stations, we have much more investment in this network infrastructure, we need a lot of base stations. On the other side, um, the, the transmit power is much less. With a lower transmit power, you can have smaller and also cheaper equipment, in particular at the user side, and we can have a higher network capacity because we can reuse the frequency. And the first systems uh, available at that time was, for example, the analog uh, mobile phone system in the US, um, the CNETs in Germany and Austria, or the uh, most advanced um, was the Nordic mobile telephone system in Scandinavia, which was already allowing roaming between Denmark and, um, and Finland, for example. What was the second generation? Second generation is to do digitalization. So we had a digital cellular phone system, the idea was in the beginning to improve the quality of service and to improve the coverage because with digital you can have a better quality. Also, the um, idea was also to include some kind of fax and uh, some limited data and there was also something which was a byproduct which was um, for a long time the cash cow for the mobile network operators was a service called short message service, SMS. And also, in particular coming from Europe, the idea was to have a European system which allows for roaming between different countries. And that was um, then in the end, which, um, which characterized the second generation mainly to be digital, but also to offer some more services and to offer some roaming capabilities. And we had in the US, we had the digital and um, advanced mobile phone system then called. We have the IS-95 in the US. We have PDC in, Yapa, in Japan and we had the GSM, which was first called the um, European Group Special Mobile and it was later called the global system for mobile communications. Because of the roaming and the number of equipment and devices um, in the market, this was um, ruling uh, was the most successful digital mobile phone system in the world. It started with operations in 1992, and what we saw before, we have something like four to six billion users in the network nowadays. Then the question was, what is the next generation? What to do next? We have cycles of 10 to 15 years from one to next generation. And um, there was an early start also from Europe, seeing we having having a leadership position um, in mobile communications. We have to maintain that. So what is the next generation? Europe called it something like universal mobile telephone system. And the idea was, what can we do? What is the next generation? And of course, after you have mobile voice um, in a good quality, digital, you have some data, the idea is to have more data. And more data, the idea what to do with more data, well, mainly multimedia. And at that time, in the, um, in the mid of the 90s, um, there was a lot of discussion on how to do um, the next generation of the mobile phone system. Question was, um, maybe you can have two megabit of data rate um, in the peak and something like 384 kilobit data rates in the rural areas. And then people were asking what to do with that. And no one really had a clue. Uh, I was working on a project with Bosch and they were defining MPEG-4 and we had uh, mobile devices like PDAs, they had something like 300 by 200 pixels and then they said, well, for that we need something like 
80 kilobits, 100 kilobits, maybe 120 kilobits. But no one would need anything more. And then life comes, and I know that your mobile phones have HD um, devices, so we have, of course, much more data we need. But at that time, the main use was internet access. Internet access for laptops, that was the first thing which started off with UMTS when it came operational in the 2000s. If you look for the data evolution, um, we see that um, the second generation had something like 10 kilobit. And we have, um, over the years, we have here the years and the different systems, a constant evolution in the data rate. We had this UMTS I was just mentioning, um, aiming at something like 2 megabit. And then we had improvements of, H of UMTS, like high-speed packet access, high-speed downlink packet access first, and uplink packet access um, with something like a couple of, um, something like, um, uh, what do you have here, 14 megabit at that time, and then we have LTE, which is ranging to 100 megabit, and 5G should reach this one gigabit per second. And now it's time for you to work again. Um, these are our references we used for this uh, part of the communication course, and I thank you very much for your attention. Looking forward to see you in the next course.